Hi, my name is Billy Dunn, and this is my week six, blog two on community support group analysis. Um, I was able to uh, locate a video on YouTube. It's the Sober Project 12 step meeting. Uh, it was done back in September 15, 2015. Uh, it's a three part series or three part video, three videos. I would say totaling about a little bit over an hour. Um, the report is basically, it's an open group, an open group to members seeking sobriety. They didn't indicate exactly uh, what they're recovering from or what their challenges are. They just basically um, had an open floor for individuals seeking sobriety, support, and prayer. Um, that was the purpose of their group. The number of attendants, I would say, is about 10. It was a little hard to gauge because it was a three-part video, but overall, I would say it was about 10 people in the group. Uh, the group was located in a church. Looks like perhaps uh, like a recreational room uh, in a church, so... Uh, it's just a simple layout. The chairs are in a circle, so that way everyone is engaged. And um, individuals are welcome to bring their children. Uh, there was an uh, individual there with a child. Uh, so that way, I, I really like that. So you can still attend the meetings. Um, if you don't have child care, just bring your child with you. And everyone just continue to talk like the child wasn't there making any noise at all or nothing was happening. So um, I like that. I like the realistic um, atmosphere. Um, the group dynamics was um, positive. It was very positive. And uh, it was conducted by, I would say there were three people that facilitated the meetings. Uh, one person started off with giving the bylaws and just basically going over some rules. They weren't strict guided rules. They were just a reminder of their purpose and um, what their goals is. It's like, um, it, it sounded like something that they repeat every, um, every meeting. Um, the other role of the other um, person would always lead in prayer. They would lead in prayer they would, um, if someone had something to say, they would say a prayer for that individual who was experiencing challenges. Uh, and there was another person who kind of worked the floor um, and sometimes would um, facilitate from his chair as well. And so there was, I would say three facilitators uh, in the meeting or in the group setting. Uh, it was an open floor for people to discuss their challenges. And when, um, let's say, I believe her name was Jennifer, uh, discussed her anxiety that she felt with against her brother who um, was always told is better than her you know, I guess maybe because he's a boy. So it seemed like there was some uh, gender roles, insecurities um, in her family. And so she was dealing with some insecurities and anxieties. And so the group members there were supporting her and told her, you know, gave her encouraging words not to worry about that. And, you know, you are important. You are somebody, you are better. Um, don't compare yourself to your brother. So it sounds like something perhaps her parents or family members, you know, always um, put the brother up on a pedestal and she was just always like second fiddle. Um, the um, activities I would say in the group was, oh, one of the activities was they gave out pins. The pins were color coded crosses. The crosses represented, each color represented your amount of time of sobriety. So it was like a roll call where they would give out a pin for one month of sobriety. And in case you forgot 
what your color pen meant, it's on the back. And on the back, it says sober for 30 days or one month up to like a year or a year plus. And so there were two individuals that, um, you know, when he announced each level, uh, two individuals came up to get their sobriety um, pin, which was a cross. And um, you can just really see the pride uh, that they felt receiving that pin, that symbolism of sobriety and just making it that 30 days meant a lot and the support and the camaraderie, if I'm saying it right, um, in their group was really positive and encouraging. Um, the individuals in the group were just regular people. They looked like everyday people. They didn't have a, a perceived look of disheveled and, you know, like they just came off of drugs. They looked like everyday Jane and Joe that works at your local grocery store, um, your hardware store, wherever. Um, wherever you encounter people that just everyday people uh, that had challenges. Um, another thing was they provided, they gave a time where they provided um, a list of places that were offering jobs. So if anyone was looking for an empl employment, they had a, a sign up sheet for people to list places that were hiring. You know, some people mentioned Home Depot, another person, how they mentioned another store, but so there was a list of places if individuals were seeking uh, employment and they also announced um, that they have a pantry. So, if, so that no one has food insecurities. So they provided support for uh, to celebrate their sobriety, um, jobs, food, and a safe space to have conversation about the challenges and the securities that they face um, every day. Uh, I would evaluate uh, the two areas of the group leader that was effective, including specific examples very encouraging words, um, like the individual, Jennifer, I believe her name was, who was facing challenges and insecurities about always being compared to her brother, he immediately gave her encouraging words, said a prayer. Uh, there was another individual who was um, married for about, I want to say 36 years. And he, it's like he just came to the realization that his wife, basically wanted to be heard. She just wanted someone to listen to her about whatever her day was at work and how much that meant to her just to be heard and just for him to take the time out to stop watching TV and listen to what she was saying. And so he shared that with everyone in the, um, in the group discussion. And, and I like that he mentioned how many years he was married and how it's still important to uh, recognize that there's challenges in marriage and sometimes you ignore, you know, your spouse, mate, and they still need that recognition. They still want to feel validated. They still want to feel heard. So him mentioning that um, was really nice to show that even though he's been married for X amount of years, there's still challenges. He recognized it. He spoke about it and um, I, I think it spoke volumes. Um, and so another um, effective thing that they did in the group, when they were handing out the pins, these little crosses, uh, pins, color-coded crosses, they would say, or the person presenting the pin would say, if you want some, come get some. And so this was like their motto. So he would hold up that pen and say, if you want some, and then everyone else would say, come get some. And that was their motto for, you know, come and get some sobriety, come and get this. And so I really, I, I like that. Everybody joined in with that. So uh, you can hear that in the video as well. 
And so as far as um, any suggestions, areas of improvement, um, the quality of the video uh, was a little, um, I think even though it was shot in 2015, there's tripods available. I think perhaps if they would have just set it up on a tripod, you know, it, they would have been able to capture everything a little bit better, as well as um, the people speaking, uh, the facilitators, as well as the uh, individuals that wanted to share. Overall, um, I really appreciated the authenticity of the video, the setting, uh, the realness, the normalcy of it. Um, it didn't feel staged. It just felt like, hey, we have an area where we can meet, discuss things, and um, we're here to support you in all areas, not just sobriety, because sobriety is one thing, but you have to know how to manage a job. You have to, you need food. And sometimes I think when you don't have those things, then you can fall back off the wagon because it's a challenge to maintain it. Uh, there was one individual, um, I don't remember his name, but um, he was in jail. I, he was given a very long sentence, but his sentence, I want to say 25 years to life, but I think he only, only did it maybe about 10 years, 10, 12 years. And he mentioned how supportive his family was during his entire time in incarceration. Uh, his family, he mentioned, was well off, lived in Orange County, California doctors, lawyers, you know, have homes. They supported him his entire time um, in prison. But when it was time for him to be released, he needed an address and everyone just disappeared. No one provided an, an address. They stated he's a dangerous person. And so it really took a lot for him to to gain strength. He had to, he ended up, he said in Arizona in like a hot box type of, uh, basically like a, just a room in the hot box because it's Arizona. And um, he just felt a certain type of way of being abandoned by his family who was so supportive. It's like, okay, we'll support you while you're away. And we can just give you this um, kind of like pity money, um, you know, to feel like you're doing a good deed, but then when he needed an address to be released, um, no one would provide one. So he just, his words were very encouraging, to, you know, for the group to show that don't give up. You know, even though I had all of this, I came from a well-to-do family, I still came out and had nothing. And so, um, his words were really good and um, impactful on the group. So I enjoyed the videos. Um, like I said, the only thing is the quality is a little bit iffy, but you know, they were so happy and so proud of this video, of their videos actually is more than one. Um, I didn't mind because you can just see that they were just uh, beaming with pride and um, just happy to make this video in order to reach another person to hopefully change their life. So um, that would be my um, analysis on the Sober Project 12-step meeting. Thank you.